Hi, this is Henning and Morten from FlipNormals.com. In this video, we're going to go through how to make a Dishonored style portrait using ZBrush. As you can see, we start off using DynaMesh and we're just blocking in quickly uh, some basic proportions. It's not pretty, it's just really, really rough. At this point, we're not really thinking about that much about the design. It's just getting some basic shapes down, something we can work with later on. Not no anatomy, just basic stuff. Where are the eyes? Then we start blocking in some uh, ana some anatomy, like basic cheekbone, basic bony landmarks, and we start thinking slightly about uh, slightly about the design at this point. The trap that people often fall into is is really just the the detailing part too fast. I, I do the same. I mean, many, many people do. It's just you forget that you need a, a solid base before you actually start filling yeah. in the rest. Yeah. It's like starting. It's like if you have a, a coloring book and just like forgetting all the lines and stuff. You need to like everything needs to be filled in perfectly first, and then you can start adding detail on top. Yeah. Good analogy, Morton. <laughs> Yeah, so still just basic anatomy, just basic form. Like the, the, the final character doesn't look like this. This is just to make, to make something look kind of humanoid. And um, just exploring the kind of character is. At this point, we don't really know what kind of person he is. We just know that he's from the Dishonored universe. And as such, there are a couple of things we have in mind. Like his proportions are kind of messed up. Like he's not going to be perfectly, he's not going to adhere to perfect human proportions. And um, he's going to be fairly edgy. Like, this guy's been out a winter's night before. And... Um, yeah, he's seen some action. He's seen some action. And everybody in his world has. It's a dark and gritty world. So um, so we're trying to, to incorporate that into, like, every bit of the sculpture. Like, but the brushes we're using, which is the clay build-up brush. And just the way we're treating this with, like, hard planes. You can see with the clay build-up brush, like we're using the hard, uh, like a hard alpha with it, which really gives it this sort of rough look yeah. automatically. So you don't need to worry about you know you're sculpting with a soft brush or anything. Yeah. And I, this really already sort of supports the design. Yeah, exactly. And this is just you see us checking the silhouette, and just to make sure that we're getting the character across that we want and make him feel like we want him to feel, and just making. Just trying to get something strong out of his profile, out of his silhouette. So when we check for something from like the side view, we we, uh, we want to have like a strong, clear shape, not like small little bumps. You want to have like a big, broad shapes. This is this is true for like all the views, but particularly from the side view, you can see that it's it's kind of following like the nose and the forehead and the back of the head. are kind of like one nice curve. Yeah, and especially from. When you look at stuff from the Dishonored universe, a lot of it is very, I wouldn't say caric caricatured, but it, it's its kind of a little bit, yeah. you know, everything it's is stylized. Twist. Yeah, it is, it's stylized, and especially this is very, sort of very edgy and very defined. There's no, like, softness to this yeah. world. And Even the women, like, no, women are normally fairly soft, yeah. but, but right now they're, like, in this universe, they're just edgy and pretty miserable yeah and you look at some of the concept art and i mean you can definitely see that it is it's a they live in a tough place yeah and people they sort of they've adapted to that and that's sort of the design we're, yeah. we're going for yeah so this is here like you see like there we don't even have like eyes it's just it's just a really rough placeholder same for the lips and everything it's it's very rough dynamish stuff just getting planes down right now, and if you don't have these planes, your sculpt your sculpt will fail in the end. You need you need to define the planes. Yeah, and it's such a, like with the trim dynamic brush, for example, it's really useful to actually define an actual plane. Yeah, and this is I guess this is sort of like a particular style of sculpting. Um, this very geometric geometrical um, type of sculpting where you where you fill in the planes, you can clearly see you know this is where the cheeks are, this is the nose, this is the bridge of the nose. Yeah. Um, there are many ways, many different ways to do this kind of sculpting, but this particular style really, really sort of lends itself well to, to this character.
I think. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, now we're just getting some some eyes in here. It's really hard to 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 sculpt something without without eyeballs. Like your your eyes are just gonna look really weird because they're not really conforming to anything. Yeah, I mean you can only go for so long without sculpting eyes. Yeah. And yeah, like Henning says, it's as soon as you get eyes in there, your sculpt is actually gonna change. You can see, you know, we start to pull back the inner parts of the eye a little bit, and yeah. actually forming the face around the the two spheres that are the eyes. Yeah, exactly. Still no details though. Just just getting the curvature of the eyes. Uh, so the way we do this is just like getting the um, the poly mesh three D of of the sphere, um, appending it, uh, making it correct on one side. Once that once correct on one side, we use uh, Subtool Master, which is under C plugin Subtool Master, and there is a little guy that just called Mirror. A little guy. A little person there. So just 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 uh, hit Mirror, and this is going to mirror it over to the other side, which is really nice and handy. And this point as well, it's all it's all using symmetry here. Uh, later on, I will disable symmetry, but right now it's just really nice to to just explore the character. Once mm -hmm. you're exploring the character, it's just really nice because, yeah. I have we have no idea what's actually how it's actually gonna look at this point. No, I mean most of it is just based off of like we talked about dishonored concepts and yeah. not specifically a character from the universe, but just being inspired from the overall style. Yeah. And just trying to make our own sort of fit into that universe. Yeah. Trying to adhere to a general shape language. Uh so the thoughts when doing this was that he was some kind of like general who'd maybe Maybe had a slightly dodgy past, which you're gonna see later on, like adding more character to him, like like scars, because I I like scars. It's always scars. Always scars. Every time. Every time. We had a talk about that just before, and I I, I asked Henning if he'd ever done a character without scars, and nope. Yeah, we think the answer is no. Yeah, I, th I think it might be no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a character with a scar. Well, time to start. So I, I, I don't think we used smooth brush at all during the initial phases of this. Maybe some some smooth brush somewhere, but in general it's used very, very little. The cool thing about using something like um, the clay buildup for smoothing is that you get a lot of character. You get a lot of planes to almost for, for free yeah. by uh, by using that. You see, you see I smooth, the, uh, just smooth the, um, the lip out a little bit, but uh, most of it is just done using, using the clay buildup. And it's like... A lot of the stuff here kind of looks like it's very, it's done very fast and it's done without thinking a lot about it, but that is not really the case because no. it's, you got to look at faces and you got to do a lot of faces yeah. to sort of get to this point where, you know, just filling in the muscles and, and the, the bony landmarks just comes natural to yeah. you. Yeah. And, and this is not, I mean, you can't just do this like just off of nothing. No. It's, it's a lot about looking at reference. And and once you've got that down, you know that's where you can sort of start to stylize stuff and yeah. move on to to making your own sort of like really stylized to push characters. I think. I think this is very important. Like what Morton's saying now, just like really knowing the foundations before you start going crazy into your own fantasy world. I mean, of course, you can totally start making your own designs from from day one when you do oh, art. Yeah, yeah. But the more you know about nature, the better your the better your work is going to be. So yeah, just um, just getting some more um, some more fat down here as well. The way the way we start like to think about sculpture is in like a couple of stages. The first one is like bony landmark and proportion, then basic muscle and fat, and then skin and pores on top. So once you you don't start adding volume to your to your fat until like your skull is defined, because all 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 is connected to to the, the the bony landmarks. So you really need that to. To, to explore the rest. And even sort of like fat pads is something that adhere to anatomy. Yeah. Um, some people just some people just fill in fat in a way they think fat is going to be. Yeah. The same with wrinkles. There are pretty strict guidelines for for what wrinkles and fat actually look like and, and where they sit on the face. Yeah. Um, and that's I think that's really important to keep in mind. Otherwise, you, your character might end up looking really weird. Yeah. Yeah, you might not be able to tell exactly why it looks weird, but it's just gonna look off. 
something is going to look off. And that's, that's probably because you don't know your exact anatomy or yes, one stage of, of the anatomical foundation might be lacking, like uh, not knowing where the bone landmarks are, where the muscles are connecting, fatty pads, even something like top layer, like um, mm. small wrinkles and pores. Yeah. And you see here now, we're just experimenting slightly with uh, different matcaps. Not experimenting, it's just checking with various matcaps. Yeah, and we've talked about that before. And it's like, it really helps you to look at your, your, your sculpt from sort of like a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. Different matcaps reveal different things. Yeah. Like the standard matcap is really good at, at uh, sort of like pointing out impurities in, yeah. your, in your sculpt. Whereas uh, sort of like the def default one, this kind of mud box style matcap that we're using now is just really has an overall soft feel and makes it look nice. It looks more comfortable, which, you know, when you when you when you make a living making pretty things, it's kind of nice to look at pretty things <laughs> yeah. and not making you look pretty in a render for the first for the first time. Like I can't I can't stand like sculpting with the standard matcap anymore. No, because it's just. And like uh, yo, it has its uses. It's it's not that, but there are so many other nice matte caps out there that can yeah. really help your sculpt along. I think. Yeah, exactly. It looks so, so sad. <laughs> Very sad. And now we're sort of moving into some asymmetry. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of where, you know, you take the character, and give him character <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's like just yeah. by moving stuff around you get a lot more well interest in it yeah and like some 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 story into him yeah, you know exactly. like s scars <laughs> and a broken yeah, nose yeah. you know he's been in fights obviously and, and he's all just really this, ugly he's just <laughs> he's pretty ugly and all of this just lends itself to you know what we gather from from the dishonored universe yeah and by doing making it more making it asymmetrical you, you, you add more credibility to the design as well and just yeah, it just looks more interesting. So for this point on, like everything is done with asymmetry. So just hitting the X key instead of brush, just disabling symmetry. Because right now the design is kind of working. Like in, right now it's just refining it. Yeah, the base is there. Yeah. The base is there now, and now it's just about, you know, adding sort of like this top layer of of, of old skin. Because he's an older guy, so the muscles won't be as tight in the face anymore. Yeah. Um, that's sort of like. Where well, you see this aging line, as you call it, right, like around the from the nose and and down to the to the chin, and yeah. you see the saggy sort of skin underneath the eye. Um, his eyes are a little more sort of tired because yeah. again the muscles relax and brings everything a little down. In general imperfections, like because he's he's lived and you know he's he has emotional scars and all, all this kind of stuff, you know, just helps, helps sell the design more. Maybe he was beaten as a child. Yeah. You know, it's, he was beating likely. his child. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. See, just knowing about something like the construction of the eye as well is, is really handy. Um, knowing, knowing that will help you create appealing eyes. And if you don't, the, the entire the entire sculpt is gonna look weird. Like the, the eyes, are, the eyes are so important to get right. That's always where your face is like, or like when you look at something, or or a person, an animal, whatever. It's always no. you always go for the face. It's just something like in nature, you know, we're programmed to identify that yeah. as the first thing. Yeah, exactly. So that is naturally what we look at. Yeah. And if anything is wrong there, your your brain just tells you yeah. because we we spend so much of our time looking at faces. Yeah that we might not be able to explain why, but we know something is wrong. Yeah, it f you can feel it. Yeah, definitely. So also something like looking at the nose here just before, um, you can see there is some like hints of construction in the nose. It's not 100% accurate, but there is some construction to it. It's not just like a triangle shape in the middle of the face. There are planes there and, there are, and, it's, com and it's composed of multiple parts. Mm. And by doing that, it, it's gonna feel more credible and you can play around with that. One thing to note about the eyes here is that um, people don't realize this actually often, I think, is that the inner part of the eye, the one that sits closest to the nose, actually sits quite far in the face or like yeah. in the skull. And I, th I think a lot of people struggle with actually anatic anatomically, like fitting the eye in the face. Yeah. So if you just push that back a lot further than you actually think you would need to, um, that tends to make it fit a little better. Yeah, exactly. And we're on lips now. It's uh, the way the way I like to refer to lips is like the top lips because it's like three balls, and the bottom lip because it's two two balls, like two balloons or something. 
Uh, and if you have that, keep that in mind, you kind of get some more structure in it automatically. I think I'm just going over everything now. Uh, sculpting with the C add and C sub, just holding down the Alt key to to subtract stuff uh, instead of the smooth brush. Just really defining planes. Yeah, and this way you get some really nice texture. Yeah, you uh, do. Often, I mean, you know, it's a style choice, obviously, whether or not you want to smooth out your your sculpt. It's kind of like sculpting, you know, with with clay. You go with like something like turpentine to yeah. to really make it smooth. If that's what you want, but that's not the feel you we want to get across with this character. No. I, I think it's really cool to just sculpt with, like treating as a sculpture just with clay. The end result isn't like a pretty final frame for VFX movie. It's just like a yeah. kind of like a piece of art. You you don't really care if if there are brush strokes or not. It's kind of like a liberating feeling in a way. Yeah. When we work on something with the eyes, it's very important to like make sure the curves are are appealing. That you don't have any like big bulges in the curve. You, you can see before before we did the changes to the eyes, yeah, they were pretty bulgy, but just making sure that they're curving all the way around. Yeah, and the angle from the top lid to the bottom lid, like you can see here, is like the, the top lid is slightly like forward compared yeah. to the bottom lid, just to give it this sort of like angle backwards. And that really, I think that really helps sell the eye a lot. Yeah, yeah, it does. And like we talked about with appeal, it's like, I feel personally that people tend to misinterpret the word appeal when it comes to something like characters or yeah. creatures. Something can have appeal and not necessarily be pretty. Like this sculpture, for example, is not is not designed to look pretty. It's not, to not designed to be nice, but it still has appeal. Yeah. And for me, the word appeal is just sort of refers to the, the design, whether or not you find it credible, whether or not you feel like this could exist, yeah. uh, whether you're drawn to it or not. Even though it's ugly or it's a scary creature, appeal is sort of like, it's a broad term for that. Yeah. And ways you, ways you can get that is, as we talked about before, like having a solid foundation in, um, in anatomy, but also also thinking about like proportions. Like obviously here, it's not a naturalistic sculpt. Like his eyes are way further up than- What? <laughs> <laughs> like they're like one third up now, when normally it's like halfway. Yeah, his nose is like, like broken in every possible way you could break a nose. And he's very spaced, like the spacing between the eyes are very, f they're very wide, yeah. you know. Yeah. But all this is just the choice and it, it sort of helps sell the character. Yeah, they're deliberate design, design choices. They aren't just accidents. No, and these are the kinds of choices you can start to make once you understand what you're actually doing. Yeah. And you know, the more you do it, the better you get, and the better you get, the faster you can make something like this. Yeah. And you can revise on it. Uh, you know, do several iterations during a day. Yeah. And this this sculpt here is just about an hour and a half, slightly more than that in total. So this is just like some fun, basically. Yeah. Not a lot, this is not a very serious piece. It's just it's just an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes, just doodling around, just making an interesting looking character. Kind of like. He's kind of like an Elvis looking character now with yeah. the sexy hairdo. With scars in his face. <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to create something like here now, uh, we just made like, uh, we just duplicated the, the old geometry from the eye and just scale it up. Nothing fancy, just to have some clay to work with really. Yeah, and that's just faster than going up and like appending yeah. uh, like a new poly mesh. Yeah. At this point, we didn't really have an idea what we were going for for the hair. Uh, just try, you can see we're trying out different hairstyles. And it's very quick to do that. Just uh, the, just something like the move brush and also the smooth brush here. It's really nice. He kind of looks like uh, what's the guy, the bad guy from the Matrix. Oh yeah, Smith, isn't it Smith? Agent yeah, Smith. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like that, and then a mix of Elvis. Perfect. <laughs> That's a scary combination. So when when you, when you have an idea of what you want, it's a good idea to. Uh, when you're doing hair, like using the clay brushes to to block in like the bigger, um, the bigger strands of hair. It's exactly the same as like when we were starting out the face. You never want to start out with the details. No. Like you want to start out broad strokes, big shapes, yeah. and you can always go in and refine that afterwards. Yeah. So what I like to do here, I like to, uh, I like to use the the clay billet brush with no alf on it. Uh, then you just get a really nice and uh, you just get really nice broad strokes really. Which you can play around a lot. It's really quick. To, it's a really quick way to design hair. Yeah, and it gives this sort of like. This also creates a lot of contrast from from the character itself, from the face, because the hair. Yeah. 
I mean, yes, it's going to be, you know, have, have a lot of riches and stuff and, and be kind of edgy, but it still has this soft feel to it, yeah. which sort of complements the face nicely, I think. Yeah. But something to keep in mind as well, just keeping soft and hard shapes. Uh, when I was sculpting, for instance, the eyes here, uh, I kept in mind um, making the... Um, making the eyes more like softer, uh, treating them in a soft way and treating the area around it like a harsh way. You can see like the cheekbones are really harsh and protruding. Well, just the eye, eyes themselves, the area around the eyes, like eyelids are, are softer. Yeah. And like, if you wanna, if you wanna check out something regarding hair, we uh, we have a tutorial on it on flipnormals.com. So yeah, you could check that out if you're interested in some like more of the specifics of how what brushes, the techniques and stuff we use to actually create hair. Yeah, because let's say this is not in-depth hair tutorials. <laughs> no. And hair is, is hard to do. Yeah. It, it takes takes a while to get used to to do it. But once you once you learn the basics and once you have a foundation in it, it it's fairly quick to do. You can make something pretty appealing very, very quickly. Yeah, and like, you know, the way we usually do it is sort of like a mix of, of the clay, clay build-up brushes, like different alphas, standard yeah. brush and Damien standard brush. Yeah. To just sort of like build up volume, make peaks and like really yeah. deep indents in the hair. Holding down the alt key and uh, using the damn standard brush is really nice. Mm. You get some really nice and crisp, crisp lines. And yeah, it's, really nice. We use just a fair bit here as well. And you can use that like many places, you know. Yeah. Uh, like use damn standard everywhere because it's, <laughs> it's amazing. So you can see here in the standard brushes use a fair bit, just to, just to define this, the, um, the strands a bit more. And it's like, I don't know, this is not going to be seen. So, and seeing as it's sort of like, it's sort of like a speed sculpt, um, a lot of the effort is going to be put in what you're actually going to see. Yeah. We're not sculpting the back side of the head here at all. No. The, the, you see, what, what we're seeing now, that's what we're, that, that's what we're sculpting. Yeah. So we'll recome this out of the camera angle here, and that's going to be kind of from the front, or uh, yeah, with a slight rotation to it maybe. But we we, we know for a fact that we're not going to show it from from the back or anything like that. It's not yeah. a turntable. It's always nice to have a complete piece that you can show off, but. Having just something sculpted from the front or whatever is really, you know, you can present something really quickly as well like that. Yeah. Oh, hello, mouth scar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my thing of the mouth scar was just that he, he has a rough, rough past or something, and he's been in a bar fight. Somebody, somebody chipped his lip. Probably also has a scar on the inside of his nose because... Why not? I don't know. Actually, actually, he doesn't. <laughs> Maybe he had like a knife up his nose and yeah. like cut the nose open. Could be. There are a lot of possibilities with scars. Just, just know that. Yeah. So if you any if any questions regarding scars, don't <laughs> hesitate to email Henning. Um, he'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. No problem at all. We should do a, like a scar tutorial. I'll do it. You're not gonna touch that. <laughs> So right now it's just like adding some some fat to it or some like like leathery tissue uh, on on the bottom of his of his chin. Just makes it look more interesting. Like it's it's just old and, and kind of gnarly. Yeah, and you can see the variation in texture pretty clearly. Yeah. From something like the more flat areas to the curved areas. The curved areas are a lot smoother because yeah. that's sort of like where everything sort of droops to. Yeah. Um, and this again, it's all about creating visual interest. Not just in terms of the silhouette or the profile, but you can also do this internally. Yeah. Um, and this is often done with with variation in color, variation in texture, yeah. stuff like that. Just variation in general creates uh, creates interest. Yeah, contrast creates interest. Remember that, kids. It's important. What M Uncle Morton told Unc you. <laughs> Uncle Morton. Yeah. L little known fact is that I am older than Henning. <laughs> <laughs> For like six months, but it still counts. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit better about that. 
So just adding some wrinkles around the eyes as well. Very, very low on, on details, nothing, nothing fancy here. But just enough to like get some definition here, kind of like enhancement details. We're saying this area here is made of this kind of material. And, and you have sort of like the muscle around the eye, the orbiculars, oculi, sort yeah. of like goes around, like in a circle, it's like a donut shape. Yeah. And with any sort of, um, with any sort of wrinkles and, and stuff like that, it always sort of, it goes across the muscle. Yeah. So you can see the way it sort of fans out and creates these crow's feet. That's sort of, that's the, the, the line that goes across the muscle. It, it, the, they never go along them like that. So they, yeah. they cross them. That's just an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Good, Morton. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Wrinkle science. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've talked about doing a wrinkle tutorial. Yeah, we're probably um, doing that at some point. Yeah. So just by raising one of his eyebrows up, he looks just a bit more suspicious. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, you know, you're creasing the skin uh, in between his brows. Yeah. Also, you know, creates more interest, yeah. some more contrast in there. Also, when you're doing some lists, I just highly recommend getting a mirror. Uh, I mean, you're going to look really silly, and you, but you can make a lot of funny faces in a mirror, and it's just amazing for, uh, for like, facial reference. You know, it's going to be fine if you're just sitting in a room alone, yeah. making weird, like, faces at yourself. Incidentally, Henning wasn't, when he was doing this, he was sitting yeah. next to me, <laughs> which was very, very funny. Yeah, that was a bit weird. <laughs> but you got to suffer for the art, eh? And you can see here at the top of the eyes now, like we talked about before, how the skin or the muscles above the eyes start to droop. Yeah. This is very common in in people when you get, you know, slightly older. I think around the age of like 35, 40, that's sort of like when you start to, it start to droop down like on your eyes. But if you are between 35 and 40, don't be sensitive. No. We're not talking about you. <laughs> We're talking about all the other people. Just empirical data. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's a fact. <laughs> So the head is now working all right. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but it's um, f from um, from far away it looks it looks fine. So yeah. it's time to give him some clothing because like, I mean, this is a general kind of guy. He it's wouldn't. A, it's a life vest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Just for now. I mean, again, yeah. it's like with everything. Start out simple. Don't focus on details. Get the big shapes. And there's design in everything. Whether it's it's a face, hair you know a coat yeah also get reference with this like when we're doing this we we had reference on a second monitor get a second monitor if you don't have one that's gonna that's gonna save your sanity it's just really nice to be able to sculpt while looking at reference yeah. without minimizing set brush or something like that and here like just quickly to point out the Damien standard brush again just really nice creating yeah. really crisp edges nice contrast in the in the coat that he's wearing yeah, really exactly. quickly most of this is done as we with uh, the clay, clay billet brush, but uh, for some lists, it's also a good idea to use, just use a regular clay brush. The difference is that the clay billet, well, you might have guessed, it builds up. <laughs> so um, the clay the clay brush will will just have one layer, which is possibly what you want when you're doing something like clothing like this. Yeah, it doesn't keep, well, funny enough, building up. Yeah. And it you, I feel like you have a lot more control when you're doing it. It's a lot finer. Yeah, but you know they they uh, they're both good in their own way for different things. Yeah. Um, kind of think of the clay brush here as like you're putting on a like a, a piece of clay that you've defined the width and the thickness of, and you're yeah. putting that on top. Yeah. Whereas the clay buildup is just like all the time. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's really important to to give them something like like clothing, because I mean this this guy here wouldn't be you wouldn't you wouldn't make his character naked. No, and his, his character has changed so much yeah. just by just that tiny piece of clothing we yeah, put on exactly. now. It's just a jacket, you know, and a shirt. And it's really rough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's hardly it's hardly defined at all, but still it gives him so much more character. You can kind of, like before he was a floating naked head in the sky, but right now you you can immediately tell that he's some kind of, some kind of a person of, of importance. Yeah, he has authority. And you can see yeah. once we, you know, we zoom out and in and like, Look at it from up close, but we also a lot of the times look at it from far away to yeah. check again the silhouette, and you can see how well it actually works from far away. Yeah. Once you get up closer, you know the detail level doesn't really hold up, but that's just a matter of time and just yeah. refining it. The hard part here for me is is never like the details. Uh, the hard part here is getting the design right. Yeah. You know, figuring out how is this coat composed, like how how does it work, uh, and getting all that stuff. I mean, getting getting the coat to 
like feel like it's real code, that's just work. That's just getting the texture in, getting seams. That's not hard to do. No. The hard part is, at least for me, the design part of it. I think that's true for a lot of people, yeah. including myself. I mean, it's designing stuff is always the hard thing. Yeah. Um, filling in detail is just a matter of how much time are you willing to, to you know, spend and put into it. Yeah, exactly. And at this point, he's really, you know, we're not really touching the face anymore, but, and his character is sort of, it fits in with the Dishonored universe now. Yeah. And, you know, he could be, I don't know, could be like a, a whaler turned nobleman or something. But yeah. Yeah, that was something we had in mind when we started. Like somebody who maybe had a rougher background, but is more, yeah, more noble now. Maybe found some riches. And that's something you should keep in mind as well. Like, what is the past or the story of, of this character? That's going to help you so much creating character in yeah. him. Instead of him, instead of the description here being being general, and that's <laughs> literally the only thing you have to work for, it's like, first of all, we know he's in the Dishon universe, which is like heavily based on whaling. Really, it's a really poor universe. It, they're not very affluent at all. And um, but saying that this guy here is a whaler who turned rich, that's that gives you a lot to work with. Yeah, and just of just saying like okay i'm gonna sculpt face yeah face exactly. sculpt because it's like okay what do you what do you what are you basing it off then and then you end up with a bald head with basic proportions with no character at all yeah uh, just just the tiniest amount of back backstory can really yeah. help your you know designs a long way yeah in essence like it's about like one of the most important things in art is like how does it make you feel and if you don't have a backstory to it you're not gonna feel anything. So no. this is just one. This is just one of the tools we use to just evoke emotion. Yeah. And yeah. So that's a pretty, pretty big deal. Like all the tools here are, or everything we do, they're just tools, which just help us convey emotion. Basically. It's easy to it's easy to like you know tell people to make something that makes other people feel something, <laughs> and it but yeah. you know it's not it doesn't come easy. No. 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 Like no, no, no. it takes practice and. It takes a long time to get an understanding of, you know, what is... I mean, good design is very sort of objective, but, you know, there's a general sort of, okay, we can look at this. Does it look good? Does yeah. it look bad? And be able, being able to evaluate that is, is a really powerful thing. It's a powerful tool yeah. for any artist to have. Oh, man, look at that scar. <laughs> Must have hurt a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, is that happy? Is that happy? <laughs> yeah, that's something to do as well. You just uh, I, I constantly keep doing this to my sculpts. Just uh, when it's almost done, just taking like a move brush, snake hook brush, and just like abusing the sculpt a little bit. You know, just pushing and pulling stuff. Just literally abusing it. Yep, yeah, that's the best way to do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the wrong choice of words here, but no. He, but he, I mean, he does look kind of abused. Yeah. Just like why right by a move brush? Yeah. <laughs> or by Henning. <laughs> Yeah. And stop abusing your skulls. <laughs> well, let's see about that. <laughs> My point was anyway <laughs> that just taking just taking a brush and just going a bit crazy, just just pushing and pulling stuff. Mm. It can just really find you can find something interesting. And I think we're doing that later on as well. Just um, just trying out things like this is concept. You should, we're not attached to the sculpt at all. Like if we shoot off his mouth or something like that, you know that that's fine. We we can change a lot of things in this this yeah. guy here, and we have some you know we've got some nice detail around the neck now as well, um, yeah. just for the fatty pads, and just filling in the last bit of detail on the ears. You know yeah. the ears, it's it's a very small thing, but every bit helps. Yeah, and if you have like shitty ears, you can you're gonna see it. <laughs> you're, it's just gonna look shit. It's just gonna look kind of shit. Like it it just helps. Um, just it's one of these things which just just helps you define the sculpt. Why does he have pointy ears, by the way? Because he's kind of because he's kind of evil. Ah, and that right. was my thinking that um, by him being kind of evil, pointy ears is kind of like a cheap little thing to you know just sell it. Because immediately what I started thinking about is the Legend of Zelda and like tiny was, tiny fairies. What's this? Is this not a scar on, oh, his, yeah. on his throat? Maybe I don't know. Like he's been garroted or something. Yeah, my thinking here was that like something like garroting or or like. It just shows that he's been out like a winter night before. Like he's, 
he, he has had it rough. I mean, what you could do is you could also add some scars to his clothing, you know. Yeah. Like, that could be someone roughed up his clothing, trying I'm, to assassinate it. I'm kind of doing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, not scars. I just... Uh, <laughs> no, no, anything can have scars. <laughs> yeah. The clothing is bleeding. No, just uh, just adding some, like, variation to it. Adding some scars to the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I, what we're doing with the eyes now is just, like, tilting them a little bit. So he looks slightly to the screen right. Which just makes it look, look a bit more interesting. Instead of looking literally straight ahead, yeah. perfectly symmetrical, it just it just looks weird. There you, is no life. You get so much more character from just just offsetting it just a little yeah. bit. It can it's the same it's with a like a tiny bit. Just offsetting the eyebrows. Uh, yeah. just moving the eyes, twisting him, you know, yeah. tilting his head a little bit. Yeah. All those kind of things that like, you know, give him character yeah. really help sell it as something that could exist. Yeah, exactly. And just like very small tweaks now. This is after about an hour and a half. So just just going around, just tweaking very small things now, like the mouth. Just going over him and just making sure it's working. I don't think he's working anymore. He got too rich. <laughs> it's like selling whale fat. And then he's got other people working for him now. Yeah, that's true. Oh, no, so mad. Like that. Arr. Yeah, at this point, I, w I was actually looking in a mirror, or in my phone, because I couldn't find a mirror. So I was making silly faces while Morton were looking at me, <laughs> judging me silently. I don't think I don't think you knew. I thought I was like I was like pretending not to look while I was looking. <laughs> I, I had a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting that scar up, rests. Yeah. It's imp oh, it's another scar. Is that another? Scar? I, yeah, that's I a wrinkle. Sure. Sure. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> And we're coming up pretty close to the end now. Yeah. And you know, the the very last parts of this are really just detailing. Yeah. It's it's just tying everything together, making everything look really nice, and just making sure that you know we've achieved what we want to wanted to achieve with the yeah. sculpt. So yeah, some some patches on the clothing. So that's kind of like the equivalent of scars to his face. <laughs> uh, like somebody tore his favorite blazer or whatever it is. It just adds character to it. Yeah, doesn't make certain necessarily have to make a hundred percent sense, but uh, yeah, that was just the last little thing. So yeah, this is the um, this is the final result, which has been uh, taken into Moto and rendered, I rendered there, and just some post work in Photoshop. And we have tutorials on both this uh, on both these subjects on flipnormals.com. Yeah, we'll include we'll include some links for you to yeah. follow, so it's easy to find. Yeah, we don't we don't like this specific model, but the principles are exactly the same. Yeah. So we hope you learned something from this. Yeah, and thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time.